Hi guys, this is Mr. Moon again. Welcome back to Algebra 1. Today's lesson is based on a question, what are variables? At the end of this lesson, you'll understand what a variable is, and more importantly, why we use them in algebra. We're going to start off with an example you guys have probably seen before. Uh, when you were learning how to spell back when you were younger, you saw stuff like this all the time. We have C, A, and then blank. The little underline there, the blank, is like a variable. It's a spot in this word that we know something goes there, we just don't know what it is yet. That's basically the idea of what a variable is. It's a blank, it's a placeholder for something we know is going to go there. Now there are a lot of things that could go there. We could put a B, an N, a P, an R, or a T. Now I'm going to go ahead and guess that most of you guys probably put T. That would have been my guess, too. Now let's talk about what variables are in algebra. Variables are unknown values, meaning they're unknown numbers. We use them to hold the place of a number that will make the number sentence work, just like we used all those letters in that blank before to make that thing into an actual word. So here are some examples of variables. We could have letters like X, Y, and Z. We could have symbols like a star or a circle, square or a triangle. Anything that holds the place of a number in a number sentence is a variable. Now let's take a look and see how these work. Let's say we have something like three plus star is equal to five. We need something to take the place of star that's gonna make this number sentence work. Now all you guys have probably seen that that value is two. If star is 2, then this number sentence works. How about 8 minus circle equals 4? Well, it's pretty obvious that circle is going to be 4. 8 minus 4 is 4. The last one, 6 times x equals negative 48. Well, we know that if this number sentence is going to work, then x has to represent the number negative 8. All of these numbers are the specific values, the only values that make each number sentence work. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have x plus y is equal to 5. Now in this case, we have two variables. We have x and we have y, two numbers that we don't know the values of yet. But we can go ahead and fill in some values we think will work. For example, if I say that x is equal to 0, then in order to make this number sentence work, y has to be equal to 5. Or if x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 4. If x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 3. Now, these are just three examples of what we could put in place of these variables. These are all combinations of numbers for x and y that make this number sentence true. There are literally infinite possibilities for this x plus y equals 5, but here are just a few. So let's wrap this up. We know that variables hold a place of a number that we don't know yet. And we know that the variable can represent any number that makes the number sentence correct, just like we saw in our previous two or three examples. Well, that's it for me today, guys. I'll see you guys next time. That's awful.